do you think that we could be possibly towards the end times? What's your take on Revelations and where we are today? Yeah, I, I tend to be kind of a stick in the mud because, you know, drum roll, please. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. You know, I, I have no idea. And frankly, nobody else does either. You know, I, I, I um, you know, I, I taught, you know, undergrad in, in a religious, well, not just a religious school. I taught at a Catholic school. I taught at a Christian school, you know, Protestant Christian school, taught at a university. And, you know, I've, I've taught lots of classes and a number of, of them on theology. And I, I know all the systems about end times and, and they all cheat. Okay. I, I don't like any of the, any of the systems that uh, theologians, you know, you could get in your theology books about the end times because that is the, the honest truth. They all look beautiful and coherent because they cut, sort of push all the problem passages to the side. Uh, they, they don't deal with the outliers. They look beautiful until you compare them to another one, and then you get to see sort of the sore spots. So I, I, don't, I don't take you know, any particular view of, of end times uh, other than this. I believe that prophecy, biblical prophecy, the first time around, the first coming of Christ, was deliberately cryptic. In other words, you weren't supposed to know what it meant until you were after the fact. And I, I take that from something Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, where he's talking about uh, the, the, the crucifixion, uh, what, what happened to Jesus. And he, said, he says, had the rulers of this world known, again, what, what the result of the, uh, the crucifixion would have, you know, was, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, rulers of this world is a phrase taken from the Old Testament, specifically the Septuagint by Paul, for not for human beings, but for the powers of darkness, specifically the, the ruling princes, the angelic princes over the nations. So what Paul is saying is, look, had the, had the powers of darkness known that the crucifixion was actually the thing that needed to happen for the plan of salvation to be triggered and enacted and also their own demise to be triggered and enacted, they would never have done it because they aren't morons, okay? Uh, Satan and demons and, again, whatever, you, whatever other labels you want to put to the powers of darkness, they didn't know what the plan was. Now, they knew who Jesus was. You see, that's evident in the Gospels. You see that all over the place. They, they call him the Son of the Most High. Frank, they're actually, they're the only ones that do that. The, the other people, even, the, even Jesus' followers don't call him that. But the demons somehow know who he is. And again, I, I, can, I can imagine that the, the reasoning in their heads goes something like this. Okay, here's the Son of the Most High and you know, God's Son. Here he is. And there's only one reason God would have sent this guy here. Here he is trying to restore Eden again, trying to do that kingdom of God thing and save humanity thing and you know, come back to earth and all that stuff. Well, we like it here. This is our turf. So let's get rid of this guy. Not knowing that that is exactly what needed to be done. That was the whole purpose of it. And so they essentially hang themselves. And Paul says, if they had known this, they never would have done it. Uh, I, I, I go into churches sometimes, and you might get a chuckle out of this, but I've gone into churches sometimes and, and, and talked about this, and I'll say something like, folks, do you realize, do you realize that there isn't a single verse in the Old Testament that describes a Messiah who would be God incarnate, who would die and rise again for the sins of the world? And people look at you horrified, like, what? You know, what about Isaiah 53, the suffering servant? I said, well, guess what? The word Mashiach, Messiah, never occurs in that passage. And they're dumbfounded. And I say, look, look, think about what happens. Even after the resurrection, there's Jesus in the upper room with, with the disciples. He's standing in front of them. He, the risen Christ is standing in front of them. And they still don't get it. The, the, the account in Luke says that Jesus had to open their minds so that they could understand. 
And the reason they don't get it is not because they're idiots. Jesus didn't call the 12 dumbest guys he could find. The reason they don't get it is because they weren't supposed to get it. Because the messianic profile is not in a verse or two in completeness. It's scattered in a hundred places. It's disassembled. It's like a mosaic. It's exploded in little bits in the Old Testament. You can't understand it unless you are living after the fact. And so my view of prophecy is, hey, fellas, hey, folks, if it worked that way the first time, that's the way it's going to be the second time. So if it's entertaining to you to, you know, try to figure out, are we in the end times? And, you know, is Barack Obama the Antichrist? We used to think it was Gorbachev and we used to think it was Kissinger and we used to think it was Hitler. And, you know, you know have fun with that. I mean, that, I, I guess that's worth some time. Might be entertaining. But ultimately, it's a waste of time. An obsession with end times, I think, is a waste of time. There are far better things that you can study in Scripture. Uh, you know, live out your faith among people. You know, do, you know, serve people. You know, tell people about Jesus or, or, or something. But to sort of squirrel your life away, trying to figure out what's going to happen in the end times and are we living in them? It's just a waste of time. It's not the way it was intended the first time, and it's not going to be the way it works out the second time. So. So I'm a real popular guy on the prophecy circuit. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, well, I, I mean, no, honestly, I don't get invited to these things, and this is why. But I could walk into one of these prophecy conferences and say, look, fellas, I'm the only one here with actual credentials to do this. And I could pretend to be superior, and I could write books and come up with an amazing detailed, layered, scholarly presentation of, you know, what, when I think Jesus is coming back and I can write that book and rake in the money, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. And my point is, that's what some of you guys are doing. You're writing this stuff because it allows you to make a living, you know, off people's hopes and at, at worst, their gullibility, and you start setting dates and doing crazy stuff like Bible codes, I mean, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Um, it, that's just the way I look at it. The, 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 the honest truth is we don't know. So just be honest with people. Just tell them you don't know. Don't, don't invent stuff 